you see this on a first date? I'm 37. I don't have time. I don't have time for this. We had a good first date. How'd you meet him? Field. He's a puppeteer, which I was like, meh, this is already kind of not. Look, I have a history. I'm gonna look at your photos, I'm gonna look at your prompts, and I'm gonna tell you what I would change. In Jenny's profile, her first photo is of her not looking into the camera. True, it's also a cute photo. It is a cute photo. It's very cute. Should it be your first photo? It's you wrote monogamish. monogamish, I'm open to exploring the right dynamic, but looking for my LTR. This is scary. So I would just put long-term relationship. If you're gonna use a dating app as a tool, which is all this is, it's just a tool. It does not guarantee anything. Who do I wanna track from this tool? Hi, I'm Matchmaker Maria, and I am so excited to be back for season five of the Ask a Matchmaker podcast. So the format is changing. Every several weeks, we're gonna have a co-host joining us at the studio. We'll still have guests, but I'm gonna have a co-host. And this week's co-host, and for the next three episodes, is comedian Jenny Zagrino. Now, before we get started, I just wanna welcome all of you back, my listeners and viewers, if you are watching this on YouTube, so excited to have you. Please do not forget to subscribe to the Ask a Matchmaker podcast and me, Matchmaker Maria. I appreciate your support and I appreciate you continuing to tune in. All right, so in case you're new here, I'm a matchmaker. In fact, I'm a fourth generation matchmaker and I set people up for a living just like my grandmother. Now, on Ask a Matchmaker podcast, we talk dating, we talk relationships, we talk about expanding your opportunities, making better choices so that we can find our person. And if you have found your person, this podcast reminds you to date, reminds you to keep making great choices, and also gives you the advice you need to give to your friends to help them find their person. So it's almost like a dating pyramid scheme here. We're here to help people make better choices, and make changes in the world so we can be in a better place. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker podcast. Let's get started. I wanna welcome our co-host, Jenny Zagrino. Hi. Hi. Hello. I Can I say, I have been following you for a very long time. Don't, don't do that. No, I'm doing don't, it. Don't, it's don't, getting don't. done. This is what's happening, okay? I've been following you for a while. I love the work, everything about it. I'm also, I don't know if you know this, but I'm in your uh, database. Oh, shut up. Are you really? Yeah. That's great. That's hilarious. <laughs> Nothing's happened yet, Maria. Nothing has happened yet. You haven't, you haven't reached out for a little bit of Zagrino for one of your many <laughs> bachelor R men. Remember, oh, I need you to remind me to ask now after you give us a little bit more about you. Tell, tell the people who you are. Uh, so I'm a comedian. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Zagrino. I'm a stand-up comedian and... A uh, whirlwind of sass and crass and joy, and I'm here to go on this dating journey with everybody, including my own dating journey. And so here we are, and, and it's great. And now it's on a podcast. And now it's on a podcast. Well, I'm so excited to have you here. You are currently single. I'm a single. Um, I'm ready to mingle. Oh wow! And yeah, wow is right. And. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm on a new journey. We're on a brand new journey of trying new things, getting out there, meeting people in different ways. I'm doing it all. So how are you currently dating at this time? So right now I'm on two apps. Okay. I don't like it at all. Okay. I don't like any apps. Um, and I'm actually going to be trying to, um, I've decided to go into the world and like take classes. So I'm taking pottery classes. Do you think the kind of person you want to meet is taking a pottery class? Yes. Then, okay, that's a good I'm I'm like, where's the people I'm gonna, I want to meet? Where is going to be like the kind of artistic, you know, they're doing pottery because their big, you know, doctor job is so hard that they just need to take a break. You want to date a doctor? No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would like to. Why All right. not? Let's 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 make this a first date really quick. I'm gonna ask okay. you some cliche questions. I, I wanna it. learn more about you here, okay? Okay. What is your idea of the perfect date? I realized I just asked this to a comedian, so she's probably gonna give us an actual date, but tell us about your perfect date. I'll give you I'll give you an actual an actual perfect date. Okay. Actual perfect date um is an activity for me. I think I'm very bored with coffee dates. I'm very bored with like I don't drink. Uh huh. I'm sober, California sober, so I do other things so those other things 
Mushrooms, everybody. I do mushrooms. I'm going to add this to the matchmaking form on my website agapematch.com if you have not joined the database you might be waiting like jenny here but <laughs> at least we can consider you as a potential match for any current or existing I'm in it but i will add that because i've yeah. never heard anyone call a california sober yeah i'm from new jersey exactly. we just call it hardcore stuff but that's a great <laughs> drop down because right now it's like do you do drugs and it's like yes no <laughs> Maybe it depends like on what festival I'm at. For my anxiety, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the I'm yeah. It's called California sober, which is means you don't drink. I mean, it's not real. That's not actually sobriety, but I don't drink. I do other fun things. Fun. Um. Yeah. Fun things. I keep it natural. Yeah. 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 I'm just fun. I'm reiterating to yeah. support you here. Um. And uh. Yeah. So like sitting and doing like an interview is not fun. I think you also learn more about somebody when okay. you're doing an activity with them so that's what, what activity I want. um do you okay. have like a list of activities so like every time you're dating someone or you're talking to someone and they're like jenny i want to go out with you if it were only this fourth right but jenny <laughs> i want to go out with you and you're like my list of okay let's do number three on this list like okay mini golf is a great one a little bit of competition having a little bit of fun going to play uh i love to play pool so i'll go play pool um, I did have uh, one of my best first dates was a pottery class, and the guy taught me to do pottery, which was oh, like really that's fun, really sexy. It was really sexy, and it's no longer sexy. <laughs> Why? We're not together anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna just stick I with the Patrick it. Swayze. <laughs> It, it was, it it's was. very sensual it was it's very sensual also to like to learn from my partner like that's a big oh, turn yeah, on for me is like what can you teach me because i'm yeah. so smart anyways yes so tell me something i don't know so for me first date activity i want to i want to be doing something uh-huh also too if they suck then at least i walked away with like a paint by numbers <laughs> and the tokens and you yeah, get like, like a, a magnetic monopoly board exactly yeah 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 shoot did, some ladders yeah this dude sucked but i did make a necklace out of macaroni so win-win if you ask me is there mini golf in manhattan or are you doing this when you're on tour um I, there has to be mini golf somewhere in manhattan well, uh, if you know of places that do mini golf in Manhattan, please tell us in the comments on YouTube Queens. and raise our engagement. Thank you. Oh, in Queens? In Brooklyn? I can't I'll go anywhere. people to go, like, you know, to switch subways twice. That is, well, I came from L.A., and so it's like if someone lived on the west side, it was like, no, we're good. Like, I'm on the east side. If you're on the west side and I have to be on the, in traffic, we're just never, it's never going to happen. It's got to be worth it. Uh, do you have any dating deal breakers? Um dating deal breakers i think mm, i think when i'm presented with them mostly i i know i have some that are from <laughs> that you get from past relationships that don't work out okay where you're like Ugh, all right i guess that's a deal breaker now well what's that um and being an actor <laughs> that's that's a really good one it's you know a, it's kind I, of a big one now. It is. I, I will share with you that when I was single after I dated a business owner, yeah, I was like, oh, we're we're done with that. Yeah, like I want stability and health insurance. Yep. I don't want you know because I think when you own a small business or if you're entrepreneurial, you know, I mean, you work for yourself, right? Yeah. Your success is your baby. Yes. And I don't care about other people's babies. <laughs> like I'm like yeah. just like oh, that's good for you. Like at home though, like my baby takes precedence. Yeah. But you know what it triggers in me is it triggers my desire to help them. Oh, yeah. So for me, it's almost like self-preservation of not dating someone in entertainment. Because I'm like, I got to save that energy for my career. I can't be sitting here being like, what? why don't you try a class? Or, oh, I'll help you run lines. Like, I right. got my shit to do. I love you help me run lines. Do you feel like you would... Would you be open to dating someone who works in a uh, entertainment tangent profession, yes. like a casting director yeah. or production? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think I've learned, and I've I through my dating, it's made me sad to learn this. But I do think that in relationships, one person has to be supportive, and one person, while the other person chases their spotlight. Right. I don't think you can have two spotlight people. 
I don't think it's just um, what you just said. I don't yeah. think it's limited to people that are in entertainment. Yeah, but, but any, like, No, anything. no, no, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like, I think Chris Rock said it once in one of his specials that, like, in every relationship, there's a bush and then there's a tree. I think that's how he said it. I could be completely. <laughs> Did you could make be, this up? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure, like, he basically was, like, trying to say, I'm probably using the wrong nouns, but yeah. he, pro he was trying to say that sometimes, you know, one partner needs the support. Yes. And then sometimes the other person needs the support. And you have to learn when it's time to be the supportive partner. Yeah. Which city has been the most fun to meet people in? Oh, um, oh man, probably neither New York or LA. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, when I've like was casually hooking up and kind of just having like my hoe summer, the Midwest was great. Mi Minneapolis is great. Wisconsin, excellent. They got good stock in Wisconsin. A lot of corn fed boys. You ever heard that term? I have. Tell Just me more though. Tell me, fed. tell me, you know, walk us through it. You know, give us the visual of what was happening when you were in Wisconsin. When I was in Wisconsin, um, A, my body type is more desired there. I am in a larger body. It is hard to date in a larger body, especially in LA and New York. Mm -hmm. But Midwest, everybody looks like me. So they're all just like, oh, hey. I Just because I think it's also too, is they're just more used to seeing it. Yeah. So it's not, it's it's just like a part of their everyday life. It's like, that's right. what women's bodies look like. Right. So people like me more there. Also, they're just like, they're they're not caught up in like LA, New York bullshit. The posturing. Yeah, yeah. They're very just like, oh yeah, I work, I work in finance for Cargill. And you're like, oh, hell yeah. That sounds so boring, but let's go. Sounds like great health <laughs> let's insurance. Let's do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna like sit on the sidelines of the stage and be like, "That's my girl." Have you ever dated outside of the United States? Um, no. I've gone. I've hooked up outside the United States. Which country? Can I guess? Go ahead. Guess. Germany. No. Oh, I no. feel like you'd really kill in Germany. Uh, I was in Germany very briefly, and uh, I would have loved to, but it, the opportunity did not present itself. Um, I've hooked up in uh, the UK. Ah, uh, they're easy. <laughs> like, UK guys, ugh. You can't date them. No, you just turn on that American accent. That's all it is. Like, and they're oh. like, oh, would you like some tea? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they say. <laughs> they go, would you like some tea? <laughs> Let me get a lighter for you. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, come, to my, come to my flat. That's it. <laughs> um, all right, so... Tell me about the last first date you went on. Okay. The last first date. Oh, it was here. In New York. In New York. Uh-huh. Uh, we met for coffee. Um, <laughs> I have nothing bad to say about this person. We just did, like, we had a good first date. How'd you meet him? On field. Okay, we're going to talk about field. that for in a second. Okay. And he's a puppeteer, which I was like, meh, this is already kind of <laughs> not. Look, I have a history <laughs> Sometimes someone has such a weird job, you have to go on a date. I I've agree. dated I, two yeah, magicians, a yeah. <laughs> amateur pro wrestler. Okay. Sometimes you just, you come across a job and you go, I have to see where this goes. You're triggering this memory of me in college <laughs> where I met a guy. I remember his name was Zebulon. Oh, man. <laughs> and I, I was like, who names their kid Zebulon and he goes uh, puppeteers who work for a rent fair no so no, <laughs> his parents were circus performers <laughs> and I was like let's go on a date of let's see how much emotional damage this is going to create for me how damaged was it it was actually really lovely okay it was actually not that bad see, I mean we didn't go on a I think maybe went on a second date but that was like I knew that was like ah yeah you, know. you were like no Zebulon I can't, I can't bring me. home Zebulon on my parents or Zebulon is it Zebulon or Zebulon I could be saying it wrong. <laughs> you might have been saying it wrong this whole time. So this last first date you went on, so was there a second date? We went to coffee. We went for a walk. Then we went for a walk around the park. Uh -huh. And then we hugged. And then... What kind of hug? Just like a nice hug of like, I had a really nice time. Like, nice but was time it too. like a Mormon hug? No, like it, was like a two, it was a two-hander. Oh, okay. It was a two-hander. And I was like, oh, I had a really nice time. And then he had a really nice time, he says. Uh, and then it just, we both just ghosted each other equally. And I'm kind of like... No, I feel that. I think I was a little on the fence about it, where I'm trying to date outside my type because my type has been damaging me. So, what's your type? 
Um, my type tends to be kind of outgoing, big personalities that oh, no, are like you can't be with that. really funny. No, no. Yeah, but they're so they're so charming and fun. Okay, so let me tell you the problem now. Also, okay, may I may I give you some feedback? Yes. Okay, you're a light. Yes. Right. You own most rooms that you go into. You have a big smile. Yeah. You're uh, I feel like I can say outspoken and you might be extroverted. I don't know if it's just yes. perform. Okay. Um, I'm not saying you need to date an introvert. I'm not saying you need to date anyone boring. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. You want someone who's uh, entertaining to you too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that can be a really tough relationship compatibility wise, like longer than three months. I think that can be a mm -hmm. lot of fun in the beginning when you're like trying to get to know each other and you know the lust is at a high level yeah. and you can giggle while you're having sex and like experiment new things but then eventually that plateaus right like yeah you know hormonally you're kind of like okay is this going to work now and if you're someone whose job is to make people laugh yeah or entertain people and then you're bringing that home with someone else um i think it can be really hard when they're not getting the laughs that they're expecting yeah and the male ego is very fragile sure your words <laughs> um i'm not disagreeing with you okay but what i am saying that like there is a moment in that relationship trajectory yeah where it plateaus and then it becomes i feel like and i feel like this way for even like ambitious women i'm not saying that women that are ambitious shouldn't date other ambitious men mm -hmm. but it's i think sometimes it's more about being like someone who's goal oriented or someone who is like supportive of female ambition Yes. Because then if they are supportive of that, if they acknowledge that, then there's, I would hope there's no competition to glory. Yes. So that's, I've, I've noticed that like I keep going for these dudes that I, that I are so big personality wise that I become smaller around them. And I'm like, okay, that's a very like fawning childhood shit. I'm going to go for, I'm trying to go for quieter um people who are doing their own thing people who like what i do but have no interest in being involved in it mm. um but it's 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 just hard it's just like i'm around entertainers all the time yeah and i know how to talk to entertainers right and i know how to have like i know how to b have that banter and that vibe with people who are in my business so it's difficult to kind of go outside of that like right now i'm having a conversation with a guy and it is so boring <laughs> and he's just like a regular guy maybe it's like wisconsin <laughs> you need to familiarize yourself with more with boring people oh, with more good. regular people okay instead of people who entertain like i think you're dating in a bubble yes uh, it's a bubble of single people yeah and they're all single for a reason including this girl <laughs> i didn't say attachment that. theory <laughs> <laughs> but i what but i think I think right now on your dating journey, I okay. love that you are consciously saying, okay, I'm going to date outside this type that I have. Yes. And I also think it's great that, you know, you're taking yourself to things. You're going out to meet new people. Yeah. That are beyond this bubble that you have for yourself. Yes. So you said you're online dating. I am. What apps are you on? Okay. I'm on two. I'm on Hinge, mm. which I just got back on Hinge. I'm very disappointed in Hinge. Why? I get no matches. Okay, I'm gonna look at and your the matches profile today. I get are. Uh, it sounds so conceited. Okay, I'm a fucking catch. I'm cute as hell. I'm funny. I'm smart. I'm interesting. All these things, and the whatever the algorithm's feeding me because I'm not paying it uh -huh. is giving me just like dudes in like you know Flatbush that are like I drive a truck. What do I? What's what's my two truths and a lie i like to eat and you're like what is that's not even the question you didn't even answer it and it's just like they're so i'm just like there's no there's no way there's no way it's mm -hmm. very upsetting and then i'm on field uh -huh. which is more fun Oop. it's more fun it is uh obviously geared more towards hookup culture and you know a little bit of kink and fun but there are people who are looking for relationships and it's really the only one where people like talk to me. Huh. So so that's why I met my last relationship on field and it it was fine until it wasn't. Well, that's a lot of dating. But yeah. 
Well, so, let me look at your hinge profile. Let me okay. see what we can do to fix it. Are you okay with you that? Sure, you don't want to see this field profile. Uh, I want to see the field too. <laughs> yes. I don't know anything about field, but my producer just pulled it up. What is field? Field aims to be an inclusive and safe space for queer people, non-monogamous couples, and people with a wide variety of kinks. It covers virtually the whole spectrum of why someone would use a dating app. This kind of sounds almost like tinder like make it like it, it used to so i i actually have a bit about it where i explain how like field was tinder back in 2012 where it was like women were like hey guess what everybody we just want to fuck and then people were like oh i can't believe it and they like <laughs> lost their minds and then now we're worse i think we might be worse off but my point is that yeah it's it's um it's more expressive it's more like people are very open about what they want because you might meet someone on hinge who seems great and then you find out later that they're a total sub that likes to be pegged pegged and tied up and i'm and you're like but i'm the sub and then it's sexually it's not compatible this is kind of like well does field allow you to filter for kinks yeah what yeah see tinder doesn't have filters yeah you can you can uh filter be like i'm looking i'm there's a lot of enm people on there a lot of married people in open relationships so you can also filter for that. You can filter for people who specifically say like relationship in their profile. Are you interested in meeting people that are into ENM? Are you into ENM? No, no. I'm not. I'm looking for a monogamish relationship. What does that mean? So that means Why is there an ish on okay, that? So that means that I want to be in a committed, trusting relationship that eventually leads to a long term marriage and kids. Oh, okay. Which I always bring up on the first date. Like, hey, I'm interested in having kids. Are you? You see this on a first date? I'm 37. I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time for this shit. If they're like, oh, maybe. I'm like, cool. We'll keep going. If they're just like, I'm not interested in having kids. I'm not going to change their mind. Right? Okay. So, um, so, <laughs> wait, what was the question? <laughs> I lost. Because my, my brain was just like. <laughs> I'm still. Okay. I'm. Wait, show, tell me how you say it. Okay. I was so, you and I are on a date. Yeah. Okay. okay, so what are you looking for? I'm just looking to go on a second date. Oh. All right. Well, that's great. But just <laughs> Wait, so you, you know. ask them, what are you looking for? Yeah, so Open looking ended? For? Yeah, like, what do you, what do you want? Like, you're looking for, like, a, like, a relationship? And I'd say, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having fun and this is fun. But, you know, long term, I'm looking for a partner and, like, I am interested in having kids. Is that something you'd be, like, is that something you want? And if they're, like no i i don't my think i heart, want kids my heartbeat is like i'd be like <laughs> oh bye <laughs> see i would approach this differently okay um instead of asking people i would just talk about myself okay so i would say oh like one because it always comes up how is your online dating experience going yeah it's like i met some really interesting people you know hopefully i'll meet someone that i can one day you know get married and have kids with wouldn't that be cool yeah i'm not asking them yeah because Oh no! I gotta get I get in there. I go fucking. Oh, do people shit. do people ever Figure respond with like? Yeah, sure, sounds good. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Why aren't you dating them? I was. And then <laughs> I was dating them, and then they then it just doesn't work out because yeah. they're whatever. They got their issues. They're actors. so I did the people I have been dating, which has been few, are the people I think match what I want, but then it just ends up not working out. I swear to God, if Field listens to this and they don't come back with ad money, <laughs> I'm be so pissed. I will say that is, okay, I'm going to say that that approach is, a, I think, a very good approach and I'm going to use it because it, in a way, it's kind of like, you remind me of stand-up of like, make the joke about you mm. more than about other people and people will be more gravitated towards it. Right. So it does make sense. I just learned something. I did not know that you do that. Oh, no, yeah. I, I don't know the technical. I just like comedy. I don't know the technical aspects of it. If it's like if I'm writing a joke about uh, an experience, instead of saying, like, we're all like this. We all do this. Uh -huh. I try to be like, this happened to me, and here's my experience about yeah. it. And then if, if they're on board for that, then I can go be like, and we're all like this, right? Yeah. Which you could do in dating. Be like, I want a kid. Doesn't everybody <laughs> want a kid? <laughs> Um, okay, so, you know, uh, on field, we've pulled up that they have a lot of acronyms. Yes, a lot. Uh, well, I only we know have, a like, handful. Right now. So we have ENM, which means practicing ethical non-monogamy. Yep. FWB, we know that, friends, friends with benefits. benefits. 
um ffm interested in female female male three ways yep. ff female, three ways female, female. all girls <laughs> i'm not laughing uh i that feels greedy to me. That, that feels like <laughs> kind of fun, though. Kind the guy fun. that's like only women in multiples of three. Also, like <laughs> everyone's okay. cycle has to like synced up. <laughs> yeah. Or it could be more fun if one of y'all, one of y'all's. <laughs> <laughs> if you are not watching this on YouTube, you yeah. are really missing out. Which, okay. mo which moon cycle do you want this week? <laughs> Uh, there's GGG, which uh, that's from Dan Savage. Good giving and game. Good in bed. Giving equally in time and pleasure and game for most things. I love GGG. I, think I love that's, it. I think that's excellent. All right. So now we have gray A, short for gray sexual, meaning people who rarely experience sexual desires. It's I, like an asexual. I've never heard these terms. I've never, I've never heard, heard gray heard sexual. We I've... have key holder, a dominant in a dom sub relationship that holds control over the sub's chastity. Oh, yeah. That's that's like a big one. There's lots of different types of dom sub relationships. There's financial doms there's financial doms yeah that's what i'm really gonna where for. do we get it can, if any financial doms or excuse me if any financial doms happen to be listening to this episode we would love to have you me and jenny want to have you on upcoming episodes. i want to know about how to how do i get in on this i want to know everything yeah you basically just dominate someone financially so you're like <laughs> give me you, your, your money. money and they love it the, the people are like yeah that's crazy <laughs> How does that We don't happen? kink shame I'm here, not Maria. kink shaming. No, no, no. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not kink shaming. I'm like in awe. Yeah. I w sometimes I do kink shame, don't. So uh, look. <laughs> I, I used look. to, I think when I was like 23, when I didn't know how many kinks there were. And I was like, oh, this is normal? Like, okay. I definitely had a situation recently with a friend where I was talking about a dating situation that happened to me where somebody... Tried to pee on you? Yeah. No, no. Oh. I mean, sometimes it happens in the shower with guys they just pee on you because they think it's funny and it's funny okay it's funny every time i'm just like what are you doesn't doing? this happen to everyone Does, don't you guys get peed on in the shower by the person you love <laughs> guys are so stupid and they think it's funny and you know what i think it's funny it, and you know what i'll do i'll fart on him when we're cuddling you pee on me in the shower get ready for a little toot on your balls okay <laughs> Eye for an eye, baby. Wisconsin. That's where you got to go. Wisconsin. We got to get those cheese hearts. Because they're probably used to it. Yeah. So. And I'm lactose intolerant, so I got them. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You said you're on Hinge? Okay. I'm, well, I'm a hinge. hinge pro. I okay. want to see your Let's profile. Let's Hinge. All right. So first, when we go through your Hinge profile, um, I'm going to look at your photos. I'm going to look at your prompts. And I'm going to tell you what I would change. Okay. If I were you. If you All need right. to change anything. Okay, here we go. All right, so uh, in Jenny's profile, her first photo is of her not looking into the camera, not with an open mouth, with a millennial emo hairstyle with curly That's hair. That's just my hair. Okay. And That's it's, just my it's face. in front of an improv. So we need to know she's a comedian. True. It's also a cute photo. It is a cute photo. It's very cute. Should it be your first photo? I, th I think so. Okay. All right. You're the you're the expert. All right. My self-care routine is a trip to the Korean spa. Okay. Let's re-establish who our okay. audience is. Who are we trying to attract here? Straight men. I go for bi. Okay. <laughs> well. Okay. Fine. But we're looking for men. Then a day's trip to the Korean spa for a man is excellent. Absolutely. Okay. Um... I would add more to this. Okay. So you could say a trip to the Korean spa. Um, I love sitting in caves. In, <laughs> I in do rock love caves. sitting in caves. I love sitting in a rock cave. Uh, is, what is it? A mineral cave. I, I love a mineral cave. I think that brings out more questions like, what is a mineral cave? Yeah. Like, I, you know, I'm trying to find like message bait here. Got it. Do okay. you get what I'm saying? Um, all right. So the next thing is her stats. So she's 37 women straight. Five foot four. Oh, that's why you said, oh, you're so tall when you, you came are in. Tall. All right. The, you live in Flushing? It's just, just where I put it. Oh, okay. Uh, don't have kids, want kids. Duh. It says here, no drinking, no smoking, sometimes marijuana, sometimes pills. All right. Write a performer at entertainment. Went to school at Mass Art. Our girl is Jewish mm -hmm. from the Midwest. The Midwest. <laughs> Minnesota. Minnesota. The Midwest. She is liberal. And 
it says here figuring out my relationship type monogamous. oh it should be under mono it should be under oh we, maybe i did put it there it's you wrote monogamish. monogamish i'm open to exploring the right dynamic but looking for my ltr this is scary okay so i would just put long-term relationship got it okay like that's what we're looking for here okay you can have that conversation on a second date okay i would also question if you're exhibiting avoiding attachment issues how so because 100% your girl's working towards secure. Yeah. But she has avoided. Yeah. Well, On you're, the fearful, saying, you're, you're literally fearful saying it. it with the words. I think this is what I think of as doing with that, with mm. the figuring it out, is that I don't want to. Okay. This is goes to a bigger conversation about, about dating in general okay. and the advice that people give and like what to do. Yeah. Is that. I don't want to discount anyone who maybe would be a really great partner, but is like, I, you just told me you okay. want to go to secure. Yes. I want you to date people. Yes. That are secure. I Fair. don't want you to feel confusion or anxiety yeah. in a relationship. Okay. And if you're going to use a dating app as a tool, which is all this is, it's just a tool. It does not guarantee anything. Okay. Okay. Then you have to start playing like the odds here got it of like who do i want to track from this tool got it okay all right in her next photo oh, wait, i never did explain what monogamish means oh, to me go ahead which is be long term be monogamous and also to explore i would like to explore with other people do group dynamics with a partner so we're playing together and then also i know at some point down the line seeing what happens there might be, you know, something might happen. This is better reserved okay. on a second or third date. Okay, got it. And on this podcast. <laughs> okay. All right, in Jenny's second photo, she is doing a mirror selfie, full body shot, in black, not looking at the camera. She's looking at her phone through a mirror. I don't like this photo. Okay. This should be out. Oh, I love this photo. This is her one. third photo. She's looking straight into the camera, has a red lip. I could see her boob cleavage, a but bit just cleavage. enough, so I don't need to know the whole thing. Just I little. can tell what your body type is. Okay. Like you said, it's hard to date when we're bigger bodies, especially That's, in certain cities. That does scare me is that I feel like I'm always scared that my photos do not accurately describe my body type. This accurately des describes your body type. Okay. So it, even though it's like a zoomed in shot, I yeah. think it's very accurate. I would actually move this to the first photo. Okay. Um, all right. The one thing I'd love to know about you is your favorite thrift store in the city. Um, I love that you tell us that you don't want to date actors. Yes. But then we're asking for an audience to give us their favorite thrift store. Like, I love a thrift store. That should be in your bio somewhere. On okay. my typical Sunday, I love going thrift shopping. Okay. I love getting a boba tea. I love, do you have any siblings? Yes. I love sending funny memes to my sibling. Yes. Right? Like you can, people can learn about this, right? Instead, um, you know, the one thing I'd love to learn about you is who would you like to get stuck in an elevator with? Okay. There, that answer could tell you a lot about people. True. Right? If someone tells us, you know, Pedro Pascal versus Stephen Miller. Yes. <laughs> like we're talking about different people here, right? Yes. Um, if they say a woman, like maybe they say Fleabag, like the specific character. Yeah. Uh, which would be insane. It would be very meta to have it like that. Very. Um, or if they say like Olivia Pope. I like priest, you know what I mean? Yeah. But what I'm saying is here is like there's a dynamic. I think yeah. here is like a lot. It's a, t a place not only for you to get people's creativity. Okay. But also for you to learn through them about this. And now if a guy wants to look like a safe person, mm -hmm. he's not going to say, I would hope, like, I don't know, um, unsafe people or people that, you know. Yeah. Like if you're saying Dennis Quaid. Like. Is he unsafe or safe? <laughs> <Have> we. Ah. <laughs> Is he is is he making waves right now by saying things he shouldn't be saying? All right, fair. <laughs> he's not uh, he's not un unsafe. Uh, there are a couple of comedians that could say that I would be like, no, sorry, buddy, <laughs> we're not going to be friends. I know them first. You know, make it even more specific to call into your comedy. What comedian would you like to be stuck in an elevator with? Yeah. Oh, right there. You could tell oh, about their sense true. of humor. That is true. What if it's me? 
okay let's Ooh. make that happen <laughs> um in your second photo you're being really cute and like hipstery you're wearing your big glasses you're yeah. holding a dog and you're doing this um you know what i'm noticing is you're wearing a lot of black is black your uniform yes can i encourage you to wear other colors or to stand in front of really bright murals yes i do have some bright clothing that i've worn okay i just want to look at a lot of good photos right now I'll be on like of all the we're gonna change that yeah. so I know we're recording an another episode soon we won't have to do that but I hope by episode three I will give you a photo shoot okay I will gift you one oh, yeah okay. I want to see you new photos but you got to get you got to get color tops Ugh. rent the runway 50 bucks whatever it is $80 I, got some, I brought a fun a new fun dress that has color in it I did not bring a change of clothes for the next episode <laughs> um okay in the next so uh this photo where you're holding the dog I'm like you're this fine is okay it. I'm uh, yeah all right, most spontaneous thing I've done. I skipped a work trip and rented a car and look at castles. I'll have to fix that. All right. Grammar error here. Um, look at castles in the UK for three days with no plan, just Google and a dream. Um, do you like castles? I love castles. Okay, then you can keep this. Okay. But like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, what? Do, well, I always look at prompts. It's like, what am I learning from you here? Yeah. What am I going to get from you here? Is As I go now, I better see a photo of you in front of a castle. I have no castle photos that are qua that are quality. Also, in all the castle photos, I have pink hair, so it doesn't even look like me anymore. As long as the first two photos look like what you would look like on a date, yeah, I don't care that if another photo has a view with a different color. Got it. Right. It's we're trying to corroborate the prompt here. Yes. All right. Then there's this photo that doesn't really look like you, but it does. It's another black and white. It's a black and white photo of her smiling into the camera. It's a fantastic smile. But I feel like you look older here. Do I? All right. Well, then let's take it down. Yeah. I feel like if this was colorful, it would be very different. It's just kind of reminding me of like old Hollywood. Okay. Um, and then your last one here is a photo of you in a podcast studio. Yes. Who's the guy? It's my friend. But guys are not going to understand that um they will i guess you know you haven't utilized the captions it's true i also always wonder if should you have photos with other people in it okay so here's what i think overall about okay. your online dating profile it needs a lot of work okay and i'm going to tell you why it needs a lot of work okay there is not enough message bait in your online dating profile for someone to message you like wow I want to do this. Tell me more about it. Like you came into this episode telling us about how you like to go mini golfing, how yes. you like men who do pottery, how you, um, I mean, people can hear it or see it, that you are a ball of sunshine, that you are funny and fun. Mm -hmm. And in, I think uh, innately self-aware. And I think probably a lot of comedians have to have that sort of characteristic. Not all of well, them. Well, the good ones, <laughs> the good ones. Okay. Yes. And I don't think that, your aura your who you are is reflected here okay it like a lot of the photos are of you not looking into the camera they're of you far away they're of you i feel like you're kind of hiding okay and um and i think that there's a way to show not only in color your personality but like also how much fun you are okay like you seem fun like before we talking about Wisconsin guys, I was literally picturing a guy wearing a cheese hat hitting on you and then you going home with him and then you wearing the cheese hat while I'm on top of that cheese mountain. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that does sound fun. And, you know, if you're trying to attract Midwestern guys, why not have a photo of you wearing that cheese hat in one of your photos? Like, I think what I'm trying to get at is like what a lot of these photos lack is yeah. your personality. Okay. Right? It has your identity, that first photo of you. Like, you should keep this photo. I will make this the last photo, the improv photo. Okay. Make that the last. Like, oh, yeah, and I'm a comedian. But look at everything. Because they're not married. You're not, you're not, you you are dating a person who happens to be a comedian. Yes. Like, I certainly am not talking about matchmaking all day with my husband. Yes. Right? Um, I, you know, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You're just like more, you need more personality in your photos. Yeah, we got to pop it out. But I have a lot, I mean, a lot of my photos are like selfies that I take and I don't, well, we're going to change that. I'm going to take photos. some photos of you today. Oh, man. Okay. I'm so excited. Okay. So. I'm nervous. I feel nervous. 
What are you nervous about? I don't know. There's nothing to be nervous about. I don't know. I think my avoidant attachment style is coming out. Well, look, the worst thing that could happen to you, the worst thing that could happen to you is that guys you actually want to message you start messaging you. Okay. That's it. That is the worst thing. That is the worst <laughs> thing that could happen to you with edits. That's true. Right? Yeah. And it ha that has to be better than what's happening now. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think whatever I'm putting out there is a little bit mixed signals just in just in my own anyways in my energy where I'm like I came to New York to like I'm gonna find somebody and then I look I go through apps and I look at male faces and I go I'm so tired of looking at men's faces like I don't even like looking at their faces anymore I I understand what you mean yeah I saw a guy on the way here today where I was just like Ugh. <laughs> he wasn't doing anything he was just wearing gray sweatpants yeah. And then he entered one of those new Tesla robot cars. Oh, God. Which, by the way, I saw one on the way here on like on the turnpike. And I legit, as I was going through the easy pass, went, oh, my God. Like, is that worse than the Cybertruck? Is, I think that's what it is. It's a Cybertruck. Oh, yeah. I couldn't. If, if I, if that's I a met deal a breaker. man. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A Cybertruck is a deal breaker. It means that you don't give a shit about trucks. You love... <laughs> Elon Musk because you've been waiting for this fucking truck forever and also you have you you waste your money you're That's a exactly. dummy you're a dumb person you're not financially you're responsible you're a dumb person um, I don't think anyone well I don't know you might hook me up with someone who owns no a I don't I don't think I attract cyber truck owners that should be in your that, in your questionnaire you do me. you own a cyber truck you know, I've had people who won't hire us. Like, they'll say, yeah. no, I don't think uh, this is worth it, so I'm not going to give you this money. And I'm like, you know, I looked up where you live. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know the dumb shit that's in the corner of your living room. <laughs> I'm a fraction of that. <laughs> Come on down. Let's yeah. Let's get you set it up. Well, Jenny, this was amazing. I'm so happy to have you on as my co-host for the next couple of episodes. It's going to be great. It is going to be great. Are you excited? I am excited. You're a little nervous? I'm a little nervous. Uh, I'm, I think because I think for the most part, I'm like a pretty good dater. And I think you're telling me I'm not a good dater. I don't think you are. I don't think I don't think you think I am. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're fun to date. I'm very fun. I think the tools that you're using uh, could be utilized better. That's all. OK. And on that note, <laughs> if you want to watch. Do you want kids or not? <laughs> If you want to watch, uh, if you want to watch me go through Jenny's online dating profile, and you're listening to this, if you head on over to YouTube, ask a matchmaker. Uh, we screen recorded as I was editing, so you can uh, see what I see and tell us what you think in the comments. We want to hear, you know, yeah, what you got to say. Um, thank you again for listening to today's episode. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, five star reviews, please, five star reviews. Only five. Only five. People who do less than five, it's just like, all right, you don't like me. Just go yeah, away. Yeah, just stop listening. I, yeah. I just got like a two star. And I'm like, why? And I'm like, wh why did you talk about 9-11? I'm like, because it was 9-11. Like, what? <laughs> I came to this dating podcast to forget about 9-11. Never forget, okay? <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like i've got snot coming down that's how much i'm laughing uh these simple steps uh these tiny little steps help the podcast so much more and of course tell your friends and uh my producer said that we should say you know um, <laughs> live left love what did she say so long ago thank you so much we love you guys with a vocal fry yeah um but thank you. but that's not how this podcast ends yeah the podcast ends the way it always ends which yeah. is be lovable but more importantly, be likable. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye.